On this video I want to introduce a new program that I wrote over six years called WebThink. Uh, now it doesn't work over a website, it's completely private, you download it, install it on your machine and all your data is kept on your machine. There's no central cloud that's collecting your data. We started it up and it's just read all its dictionaries in. It has a lot of real world knowledge in there. Now I'll show you first of all how to query the web and we'll set that to five returns which speeds things up a little bit. Apache Indian children hunting deer. Uh, now we start that off and it goes to Google and it will summarize what Google says in the top left corner here. So five results. We can hover on that and see what the actual titles are a little bit longer because they're chopped off here to make them easier to read. And uh, the HTTP address, the UPL address. Now we're going to actually visit those sites. So I press Extract Facts and it's visiting them all, which it will do in about 40 seconds. Um, now the question was, Apache Indian children hunting deer, do they eat, hunt deer or do they not? Yes or no? Are there other things they, they hunt? Do they hunt alone or with their parents? Do they hunt on horseback or on, on foot? We'd like to know a lot more than just do they, do they yes or no hunt deer. So this system, WebThink, will do that. It will do a semantic search or a smart search and it will return a whole lot of data all about the question. Now here's a comeback. The first thing to notice is that the numbering is different from what it was in Google. So we've got 3, 5, 1, 4, 2 and Google had 1, 2, three, four, five. Now this is because all of the words in the query up there are being used by WebThink, whereas Google would not use the last couple of words. So it's looking for only those sites, or it's ranking at the top, the sites particularly that have relevance to that query that we've put in there. Uh, you get things popping up from time to time. Now we can have a look at those sites. That's the first one. Now I don't like looking for buttons. Uh, I don't want to play Grand Theft Auto. I don't want to improve my aim. I want it to be easy. So a quarter of a, uh, an inch movement and we change from site to site. No clicking, no aiming, no watching the mouse move. and It's nice and easy. Um, now we want to look for relevant uh, snippets and the ones at the top are the most relevant but sometimes you know, two or three down are, are pretty good. Uh, and there is a tool in here to let us to help us do that and it's actually saying, well, there's just one on this site, and there it is. Uh, Apache Hunters Pursuit, primarily buffalo and deer. That's clearly starting to address the question. I am going to say, I'm going to store that away later on, because it's useful. If I press the button again, uh, Apache Hunter, Deer and Pronghorns, mostly in the ideal late fall season. That's quite good, actually. I think I'll add that. Uh, next one, hunted, other hunted animals were badgers, beavers... That could be useful, couldn't, couldn't it? So I'll, I'll tick that as well. Uh, that, in fact, both, that, both of those are on one and two. Number one only needs to be ticked there. Um, right, what else have we got? Uh, no, that's not, that's not relevant at all. Okay, uh, I'll bring that two back that I had before. Let's go down to the next site and we'll use the same tool as before to look for things. Apache hunted deer, wild turkey, that, that's nice and relevant. That tells all the different things that they hunted. Go again, it says there's nothing more on this side. Go to the next one. So we go to the next one and we get that. They hunted deer, antelope and small game. That's clearly relevant. And that's in number two because three is there and two, two is listed off the top. Uh, remembers where it's come from. Let me hit the button again for that. There we go, and it's number, that's number one, which we've, we've ticked already. Uh, now we'll go down to the next site. Um, first entry, hunted buffalo deer, antelope and small game. Uh, that's really relevant, and that's number two, so we'll tick that. Uh, that's not really relevant, uh, elders and children talking together. They like to go hunting and fishing with their fathers. So if we find out what the fathers hunt, then we'll find out what the kids hunt. So that, that's good. Um, if we go for another, it says it's the next site down. I suspect that the next site down is not going to be terribly interesting. Uh, mm, hunted other animals like deer and rabbits. Rabbits, that's new. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, that's number four. So we tick number four. Right. 
Can I summarise the results? Yes, I can, and I do it in a web format. Uh, we can change things like the colours and the margins, but I'll leave them all at the default. And it automatically names them. It's got a big directory full of ones I've, I've saved before, and it displays the results. So that is a web page, that's in HTML format, and if you've got Internet Explorer on your machine, uh, you can view this. So a teacher can actually pass this copy to all of her pupils, and they can see it on any machine that runs HTML. She put her own photograph, it's, uh, it's a particular file directory that you put the photograph into. You can see everything that we've put, that's the query at the top. Um, it was actually um, Wikipedia, the first entry, and I've included photographs where these are close to the extracted text. And if you remember, we decided that we wanted to extract that. We can visit Wikipedia if you want by clicking that, and the pupils could do that. And you can see the original photographs. They've made them smaller, we've made them larger, and they are JPEGs, so they've got lots of, uh, lots of detail inside them, and you can change their size without losing resolution. We can't actually go to any particular position on, on, on here at this point. Um, but if all the pupils bought a copy of WebThink, then they could. So that's the second uh, snippet that we decided we'd, we'd enter. Uh, and another site there. Uh, all Apache rely primarily on hunting of wild game and gathering of etc. So that was something we thought was relevant. Uh, here's another site. And again, we had a couple of snippets we thought were relevant at another site. And uh, again, uh, a, snip, a brief snippet there. OK, it says author's comments, which I wish I didn't bother to pop on, but I can go back up there. So if I go to the top site and I just move into there, it says uh, lots of good detail on what was hunted. And I simply say save that. And if I went through the process again, which I can do so quickly, so I might as well just do that, you'll see that the comments now will come up. Uh, and the question is, where are they? <laughs> I can't remember. I think they're down at the bottom. Uh, author's comments, author's comments, author's comments. Uh, there we go. Lots of good detail on what was hunted. So you can annotate it, and you've got a record of, of what you actually found. Going back to this, uh, we didn't actually visit the sites very efficiently, but we can here. So uh, I liked number one. I'll go back up and have a look at that. Uh, so let's click on the one, and it will now go to the website, and it's actually the Wikipedia site, and it will search for that relevant entry that we've already extracted. And it does it using the search facility inside Internet Explorer. It auto-types into it. And there it is. Plains Apache hunters pursuit primarily buffalo and deer. Um, we can do that for all of these entries. It's a good idea to close that down between, uh, between entries, but you can leave it open if you like. But you, you get more... You, you have to press a few times if, it, if you leave it open. Um, that one looks okay. All Apache rely primarily on hunting of wild game and gathering up. There it is. Uh, press that. That will pop up. And again, it'll do a search. Sometimes it doesn't do the search, depending upon the timings. And in that case, you press that big red button at the top right. All Apache rely primarily on hunting of wild game and gathering fruits. OK. So you, you're not having to search this yourself. And of course, you can modify that. You can edit it and press Next if you want. Uh, um, gets you into a good habit, this, of, of using the search facility. Um, that is provided on Internet Explorer, which I found only quite recently. Actually, I wasn't quite—I wasn't sure that it was there. Um, so I use it now very regularly. Okay, that will now return to its size. We've seen one way of storing the results, but there is another way which, which is even more convenient. We just say we want to send it to file, and it's been stored. Uh, now, all of the data structures that are created in order to generate the displays are now considerable. So we've actually saved away, I think, about two or three megabytes. It's now all saved away on disk, and we can get that back, which I'll show in a few minutes. Uh, and we are looking at the results without having to visit the sites. So a lot of the analysis has been bypassed. We're looking at the 
previous results of the analysis, and it's very much faster. So you can keep complete uh, copies of everything that you've ever asked for. Now that is nice if you're dealing with websites that change, uh, journalistic newspaper websites, and you, you may not find them if you go back to the same address the week after. So you've actually got a copy here, a hard copy of what, what's been extracted. I didn't actually show the hovering terribly much. Uh, if I hover on there, it tells me that Aortis is a personal name. It will tell me in a second that Washington, D.C. is a place. Um, American Indian is a personal name. Well, it could be a personal name or it could be uh, a name of a, a tribe, you know, a collective name. But uh, we've chosen here to, to make it a personal name. Um, we've got some references here. Schroeder, Alba, Albert H. Schroeder. Um, he's mentioned again there. We have another Sweeney, Edwin R. These are the references at the bottom of the Wikipedia site. I am particularly interested in uh, uh, analysing Wikipedia, as I'll explain later on. So I've put a good deal of time into this. Uh, transportable assets, that is a product. Uh, housing, Apache Housing, that's a company name. Well, it could be, couldn't it? It could be the housing company for the Apaches. Um, you can't always tell exactly the, the type of the, re, what do you call these things? Named, uh, named entities. This is called named entity extraction. Now, Navajo and Apache together form a company. Uh, they, they may be fighting each other or, <laughs> or they may not be fighting each other. But they, there's a relationship involved there between the two of them. Um, anything interesting down here? Handbook of North American Indians is a product. It clearly is. Smithsonian Institution is a company name. Uh, the Apaches, Eagles of the Southwest. University of Oklahoma Press is a company name and so on. Um, there are, I'll probably show them later, but there, there are grammar rules or semantic rules in here as well. Uh, Arizona uh, contains several reservations. So that's the contains and that's the is part of Arizona. Um, and the, there's more of this uh, later on. Um, US Army troops and US Army is a company name made the people, young and old, uh, uh, walk through winter flooded rivers, mountain passes and narrow canyon trails. That was the destination, that's what they had to walk through to get to the a Indian agency, uh, which we're saying is a product. And probably, yeah, it could be a product uh, at San Carlos. Um, I just wanted to say anything a little bit uh, more interesting down here, clothing, uh, and that just says it's, it's, uh, it's clothing, I think. We're missing that one, I think. Uh, don't always get them. Uh, Chiricua Chicarilla. I'm oh, sorry. We're getting these up here. Yeah, that's okay. So the one's near the bottom for some reason. Uh, I'm just finalising the installation and getting in all the last bugs out. So I've recorded this about uh, three weeks before the Tembi Festival, so we'll get those out before we put it up on the website. Southern uh, Athapaskan is a personal name. Uh, we'll show you later on how these things are actually going out into a spreadsheet. And uh, So if you're wanting to collect names, this is a very good way to do it. Um, don't think there's anything else I want to show there. So I'll close that down. Uh, for test purposes, I've got a number of text files, and there are people out there who want to handle text files all the time. So I'm switching over to that mode, and there's a number that we can choose from. Uh, I'll pick the uh, test data one. When I'm testing, I have a quick glance at this, and any change I've made, I look to see if it's changed the test data. These are positive examples, so you tend to forget the illegal negative examples uh, or false positives. Uh, you invent uh, rules and coding to get the, uh, the, the real positives out. Then later on, when you test on a wider set of data, uh, you get the false positives and then you try and remove them. So this is the first stage of, of recognizing everything. And you can see the uh, uh, real world entities, the entity extraction as before. Uh, we've got the English, which uh, live in a place. I'm saying that the language is the same as a place. 
uh, and we've got the Scots. Uh, they are actually a company name for a reason that just escapes me at the moment. There's Aortes again, and we know that he's got a personal name, uh, and the editor is a human being, he's a personal name. BASF Plastics, company name, TD Waterhouse, company name. Jenkins Builders Merchants is a company name, but Jenkins is a personal name. Um, down here there's some more interesting ones. Minnesota Mining Company, uh, Stoke-on-Trent hyphenated, Stoke-on-Trent not hyphenated, the English Channel, um, and so on. Now, these are the named entities, and we've seen them now on, on two places. We've seen them on the websites for the Apache Query, and we've seen them here as well. But we've also got semantic rules working in here. Uh, air conditioning uh, and electric wing mirrors come as standard. They are the attributes of a car, for example. Now, what's the rule that's actually found that? Click on rule, and here it comes. There's two versions for looking at it. That keeps popping back up again. Ask on. Uh, that's the rule, uh, and I'll go into rules a little bit later on. And what we've extracted is air conditioning and electric wing mirrors, and the entry word is as, uh, come as standard. You can see that as standard is, is in the rule. So it's very easy to extract semantic relations. Um, took a lot of writing to, to get the rule interpreted to work, but the actual production of the rules now is, is, is quite easy. Um, we've got the relation type is called is an attribute and the numbering is 30 and the weight is 5 um, in, in terms of ordering the, the likely ones uh, which we'll come back to later on. The rule display here uh, that can actually be used to edit the rule directly and to save it away which I'm not going to do. This is aimed at uh, linguists and computational linguists who might want to search their own text and there is a big community out there who want to search texts and present them, um, analyse them, present them in a more easily readable manner. And as you see, we've, we've done that already. With this particular test data, I'll close that down now, uh, that we're looking at, one sentence bears no relationship to the previous sentences. I'm just trying out difficult and interesting sentences. So we lose the context data, but in general, context is a complete is very important to us and allows us to cut down on the mistakes um, and we can do a lot more on context in the future as we, we'll explain later on. So that's my positive testing uh, examples. Here are lots of different companies, Rolls-Royce. We have some lists of companies in there, uh, sort of the big 500 English companies, but we have quite generalized algorithms for recognizing the name of a company like Charlemagne Capital, uh, the CSF Group, the DAISY Group, uh, UDDG Healthcare, Thor Mining, for example. Um, I keep thinking I'll put a full Latin dictionary into it, and I never do. But if you look on the web, there's only about 200 Latin tags that we tend to use. Um, and we also use Greek tags, and we use Norse gods. So, you know, you, you get Jupiter mining and Thor mining. Uh, anything that's got to do with hammers and lightning and that sort of thing tends to be a good name for, for a mine. And we've got lists of those sorts of things in there as well. Uh, griffin mining, uh, which is a mythical beast, I think, in Greek literature. Um, but it's the sort of thing you, you call a mine. Um, we've got what we call sentiment analysis here. I take the children hiking because I like it, they like it. Uh, so the semantic relation is, is liked. I often take a fishing holiday, so I like it, as is liked by me. Um, and we can say if plays were liked and so on. The play drew a big audience, so it was liked. Uh, we have President Obama there, and somebody was excited about meeting President Obama. That was something he liked to happen, and there's President Obama's name, which is the named entity extraction again. Um, we, we, you know, we could spend hours on this, but I'm giving a quick overview of it. And uh, we've got some more complicated sentences down at the bottom. Uh, Susan ended her research into the immune system. Uh, so we have something that was is ended, and that, that is research into the immune system, which was ended. David gave up the law in the 60s. Uh, he ended law in the 60s, or his interest in law in the 60s. 
Now, if you take David and you take the attribute which is in, is ended, and you take the phrase law in the 60s, you've got a three-place predicate. You've got a semantic relation. And if you wanted to extract the meaning of, of, of uh, text, that's something that you, you want to do and then work on with computer programs. Uh, I'll show you some more of these because, as, as I say, uh, people can put their own text files in here. Uh, we also do statistical analysis, and uh, there's one in here that has to do with Wikipedia and Corsa cars. I've got a second hand Corsa car, which I quite like. Uh, that's loaded it. We hit the extract facts now. Uh, it's not visiting any sites, but it's still doing the analysis. So you can see the difference in timings between the two. This is a pretty big one, and it's got an awful lot of extracted fields in it. Uh, I'm not saying it's perfect, uh, but it does get the main ones. A variety of other brands for cars. Opel, Vauxhall, these are company names, Chevrolet and Holden. Um, we have cars, a Corsa A car, a Corsa D car. We have a Corsa van, which these are all products, of course. Um, we have a, a, another car, a Vauxhall Nova. And Vauxhall, as we've seen, is a company, and Nova is the name of the car. So the whole thing you call a, a Vauxhall Nova. We've got Zaragoza in Spain. Now, we don't know all the towns in Spain, but we do know that if anything has got a comma in front of it, and then the word Spain, that it's probably a name if it's not in our dictionaries. Uh, now, I could go to the CIA website and get all the cities that it's got for all the countries in the world. But it's only got 10 cities. And I, I don't know if Zaragoza will be in that or not. All the time, you've got this pull between, do I have a list of names that I, I remember, just as a human being might do it, or do I analyse the context, the fact that there's a comma after it, and then there is a name of a country. Countries are easy. There's only about 100 of them uh, that we're interested in. Um, so, you know, we have a list of all the countries in there. I didn't put it in. It comes from WordNet, from, from, from Princeton. But we don't have a lot of uh, cities, so we're, we are... Uh, entailing the fact that it's a city. We're, we're doing formal logic on that to de decide that it will be a city. Uh, here we've got the sizes of the engines, 1.2 litre engines, and, and the number of them, which is not terribly interesting. The, the wheelbase and its size, 2.343 millimetres, or 92.2 inches, and that's an attribute of the car, of course. That's one of its attributes. And its curb weight, there, there is another one. And that's in kilograms with an equivalent in pounds. Um, we'll move a little bit further down. We've got some nice cities here. Eisenach in Germany. Now, Eisenach's a small town. I, I don't think it will be in the CIA list. But we've implied that it's in Germany because of comma Germany. Uh, Zaragoza we've had already. Bogo, Colombia again. Somewhere we don't know. And then we've got these... Uh, branches of the firm, uh, GM, General Motors Colombia, General Motors Argentina, and, and so on. Uh, they're somewhere in Thailand, Rayong, and we're implying that that, that is a, a town or city in, in Thailand. So that works nice and efficiently. Now, of course, human beings are doing this all the time. We've lots and lots of rules and, and learnt information in our brains that we are using to enable us to work out what text uh, says. And the challenge is to minimise the amount of that information inside a program. You don't want loads and loads of it because it wouldn't take six years, it would take 60 years. But uh, uh, you want the minimum amount of knowledge and inferencing ability in there to actually understand things. Uh, a Lotus tuned company name for Lotus, suspension. Uh, there's a suspension separately. It's an attribute. Um, Latin America is a place. Uh, the Brazilian market. Brazilian is a place. The Chevrolet uh, Celta is a product, and, and on and on and on. So you see we can extract lists of names which are very useful to linguists or computational linguists or people who are wanting to get a concise description. Um, here's some more rules operating here. This move is because, so it's a reason for something. Um, and the reason is the move, which is the other side of the verb. But we haven't gone to that stage yet. We will later on. <coughs> and it says Chevy's sales have been dropping constantly. And that is a reason for their move. Because, and that's another reason, it's a reason because it doesn't meet the new safety regulations, new safety requirement rules in Mexico. Um, 
So we're applying these semantic rules as well. Two stages, named entity extraction, then the second stage, which is the semantic rules. And we've got 750 of those semantic rules, which is not a lot. So it's doing quite well with, with, with the number that we've got in there. And we'll, we'll see what the rules are like in, in a minute or two. Um, I think there's one more it's worth looking at. Um, Wikipedia has an entry on cattle, and that will be analysed now. Um, now, I've actually gone into Wikipedia and I've saved it as text. That's the way I, I've, I've generated all these text files. But some people might have them in their word processes and, and need to convert them. But they can write the programs for doing that, which is not as dif difficult as doing this. See, this is actually from WordNet. It knows about lots of phylums and groups and things, Animalia, Chordata, Mammalia. Uh, in some areas, WordNet is very good. In other areas, it's, it's not so good. And we'll perhaps discuss that later on. Somebody might have some questions about that. Uh, that's the name of a bull uh, or a cow, um, a boss, Primigenius. The Primigenius, Genie, maybe. But it's the first one in, in, in Europe. They think that all the other cows were derived from. Um, these are tables of contents, and it's comforting that we're actually it's quite clear that it's a table of con contents. Now, when we start extracting from Wikipedia for programs, you know, we will be using those tables of contents. Cattle were originally defined as three separate species. Bostaurus, the European, let's move across a bit, let me see better. The European or taurine cattle, including similar types from Africa and Asia. So that, that lists those. Um, but they're separating those by a semicolon. So the next one is Bos Indicus. The next one is a Zebu, which they've put in on small letters. So we didn't actually, uh, we didn't actually uh, extract that, which is a bit of a shame. If it's not capital initial, we don't assume that it's important. Because with artifacts, things that are made, uh, if you say you're going to have every artifact, whether or not it's capital initial, you find about 95% of the things people talk about are products. They've been created by man. Uh, I mean, some of these cows will be declared as, as artifacts because they've been bred specially. So you, you've really, um, well, we've got two approaches. I mean, for the named entities, we're looking for capital initial, and we then look at the context. If we are applying the semantic rules, uh, they don't have to have capital initial in them, as we've already seen. There's a help facility here which pops on if I leave it in one place for, for too long, uh, which I wouldn't if I was working and not talking about it. Um, right, so that's, that's another document. So you can see we're well on the way to analysing Wikipedia documents, um, and I'll, I'll maybe talk about that a little bit later on. But we want to extract ontologies because WordNet, although it's very good, it's not complete and it's a bit idiosyncratic. Uh, in fact, it says that a cow is a bovine, which is a bovid, which is an ungulate, which is a mammal, which is a chordate, which is an animal, which is a physical entity. And it doesn't know that cows are usually black and white. It doesn't know that cows give milk. It doesn't know that cows are seed in fields, or that they are part of the livestock of a farm, or that they are domesticated animals. So there are gaps in WordNet. But there aren't any gaps in Wikipedia. Uh, you can have a, an international incident and it, a week later it's all been reported in Wikipedia with all the main protagonists and, and the names of the countries and everything else. So Wikipedia is an enormous resource if we can only uh, automatically read it. And of course you can see here that we've got the tools, we've got the tools for doing that. Uh, I'd like to show you the rules. Um, here they're talking about cattle. Uh, these features allow cattle to thrive on grasses and other vegetation. So grasses and other vegetation are consumed. Now if we, we take the, the rule button there, uh, we get a display of the rules, uh, of the rule that's just fired, and uh, it's in two formats. One format is here in, in plain text, and the other is in a modifiable form, so they can actually edit this. So this makes the development of your own rule and the checking and changing of them very easy indeed. So this is a file called is consumed, and the rule in black is the one that we've just hovered on, but the ones in green are also in there, so loads of rules. 
We have 750 rules and we've got something like 42 of these types. Uh, if you know anything about artificial intelligence, there were shanks as primitive acts back in the 1970s. Now these are a bit like that, but they're not quite as primitive as, as shanks. Uh, shanks would say push, pull, um, put on top of, move, and things like that, which are a bit too primitive. So we're going up a level, and these are the sorts of things I think people are interested in. What is consumed, what is produced, uh, what is an attribute, uh, what is a, you know, what class is this thing in, what is it a part of. Um, and, and we've got another, a, a number of others which relate to finance or they relate to insurance or, or the law and so on. Um, and the user can generate their own uh, if they're a computational linguist, but you need, you need some skill to do that. Let, let's just have a look at these rules. Um, I can go into big text, which might be a good idea. There we are. Um, we have trigger words that start the rule off, and this is a list of trigger words, use, deplete, exhaust, waste, squander, consume, and there's more. Uh, the S says how it will be stemmed. So if it's just an S1, then any sort of stem, whether it's a, an adjective, uh, whether it's a noun stem, a plural, uh, waste and wastes, exhaust and exhausts, uh, use and uses, that will be removed before the matching is done. Uh, if it says it's an S2, and I don't think we've got any, with an S3 there, uh, that S3 is one of the verb ones. So if it said processors, we wouldn't accept it. Uh, I think S3 is the ED one, processed, the, the past participle. So we would only accept processed uh, in, in this particular case. Um, there's another one for processing, and there's another one for processors, the third person uh, singular. Um, and that seems to be um, enough to, to, to cover things that we, we want to cover. I mean, you might have a list of these things, S3 plus S2 plus S1. I haven't done that. Uh, but if we just say, if you say S1, it's everything. If you say S2, it's nouns, and it's just the plural noun. If you say it's S3, no, no, that, that's, sorry, that's any sort of verb. So that's process, processes, processing, processed. If you say S4, it, I I think that one is just the processors, and then S5 is processing, and S6 is processed. So you have a good deal of control over what sort of form will trigger the rule. So it's looking for a word in the text, and that triggers the rule, uh, and then there are various other things going on here. The PRL says that we will not have a, um, a passivized form, so we can't say X is depleted. So B, because B is, is the root form of is. So we're saying we will look for that on the left-hand side, and if it's there, we'll throw it out. Um, we've got here additional things we're looking for, and they are required. Uh, so of, by, to, for, time, or plan. So those are ordered together. So so long as one of those is there, so we have, uh, uh, as long as we have one of those there, we're, we're okay. Sorry, got it wrong way around. That, that actually throws it out if that one's there. Um, the ARR throws it out. The QRR down here, QRL, that says it must be there. Um, okay, so we can, we can also have uh, suffixes. Uh, any word that ends in meant or ship, hardship, uh, don't know, uh, worship, uh, government, uh, experience, um, ism, communism, uh, Corbynism, uh, whatever. You, 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 see, you see what I'm driving at here. So you've got a good deal of control over the sorts of words that you're looking for. So those are, throw the rule out if one of those occurs. And it sort of searches through the text until you get the full stop on the end of the sentence. There's a little bit about commas and what do we do about subsidiary phrases and things. But I don't want to get into too much complication there. Um, the Q down here says there has to be one. So um, we have the word involve, and then we've got to say it involves make, making or manufacturing or building. Um, now, I haven't actually specified that those have to be ING. Um, so it, these are carefully tested rules, so I'm sure they're okay. But when you come back to them, you can't immediately see why you did things. The ARR, again, is 
we're moving to the right, and if things exist, we're, we're throwing out the rule. If it says QRL, we're actually going to the left. Uh, also, uh, we are requiring that we have the word make followed by the word involve. Oh, yeah, making beer involves uh, water, for example. Uh, and I usually put an example down here. Uh, these features allow castle, cattle to thrive on grasses and other vegetation. Uh, that might not be relevant. Never mind. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so these, that, those are the rules. Uh, those are bi-directional rules. They are head-driven. I'm getting a bit chomsky in now. Uh, so that they're head-driven, and it's not really a syntactic head. It's a semantic head that you're picking. But you also want to pick a, a head that is infrequent in, in the general text um, that you're likely to process. Otherwise, you will have lots of rules queuing up to fire that then don't fire, and that slows it down a lot. We have 750 rules in total. Uh, I actually did two years of a PhD on, on this sort of a parser for a different purpose. So I, I found, I wanted to use these skills, and I think I found a way to use them, and the performance here is really pretty good for, I spent about 18 months on, on these rules. So uh, I intend to spend more time uh, we've got 750. If we got up to about 2,000, we would have a fairly comprehensive uh, coverage. Uh, so that's something I think that uh, we'll be doing a little bit later on. Uh, now, there are debug tools uh, that help you to see which rules are fired as your text was actually uh, processed. But that's getting into sort of very computational linguistic sort of thing. So I, I, I don't want to do that. You can see all the different rules here we've got for is consumed. There is one last thing that I want to show, which, which is the retrieval of the old query data. So we've, we've, if you remember, we were doing the Apache children hunting deer and we saved it away and we said we get it later. If we hit the history button, uh, we have a list here of all the queries that have been stored. We've also got a batch facility that you can leave running for an hour or two, and it will run lots and lots of queries together. But again, I don't want to get into too much technical detail here. But you can see query 69, Apache Indian children hunting deer, and we made, I made that on the 30th. That happens to be the day when I'm doing the recording. If I double-click it, it will fetch that. It will read in all the data structures and all the information there is available to us. Uh, have I got the right one? Yes, yes, I have. I'm just wondering why there aren't more of them. Uh, right, recording again. I've, I've solved that. that. We went into the test data, which is not aimed at general users, uh, and I left all of the settings that I made up in the tools uh, for that, which is why it only showed one of them. So I've cleared those out, and I've restarted this up, and I'll go back into the history, and you can see 69 that we looked at before, and I'll double-click on that, and it's extracted them. That's exactly as we had them before. And we can hover on there as we did before, see what we had before, search for it, just as we did before. And we can click on that and visit the site. Is this? That's the Wikipedia site, right? Uh, we can also as we did before, decide that we want to store things away. And it hasn't, uh, it hasn't kept that decision. Um, I don't think you would want it to do that, really. And then I go into the web file, and we could create the web file as we did before very quickly. And we've seen how that was done. This is a newly created web file uh, with a different set of clicked, uh, clicked snippets, as I've just uh, selected out. There are just a few ergonomic features I'd like to show. Uh, I've produced HTML files with these clickings, uh, but I could also transfer them to a clipboard. So I'll show you that as well. So if I go to clipboard, and it's now done it, uh, and I open up uh, Notepad, and I paste it into there, that, those are the entries that we've extracted. So. That's a good deal easier than, than sort of wiping across a website, and highlighting it in blue, and then you get all the tables you don't want as well. So, so this is aimed at very high speed extraction of text from, from sites, um, which is obviously a nice useful thing to have. Uh, I don't need to save that. 
Uh, we can also just select phrases. Uh, if I click on Washington DC, oops, too much clipping over the top. Uh, I've lost that one. I'll uh, pick another one. Handbook of North American Indians. That's better. I did it a bit fast. Then I wait for about two seconds and it will be stored away and I can have a look at it and I've got a little clipboard here of uh, the things that I've extracted Handbook of North American Indians uh, I can delete any of these that I don't want and that was the one I got by mistake so I'll take that out uh, I can actually use that as a query if I want so if I go back into here and I can't remember how to do it oh, that's, um, those are synonyms that were put in, in here that are, have been extracted from uh, WordNet um, and later on we'll have the ones we've extracted from Wikipedia. Um, let's clear that and I think what do I do here? Uh, right click for a paste menu. Oh there it is. So what we've collected from, from existing uh, displayed snippets we can actually put in as a query and then we can query the web again and unfortunately it didn't like that. So that's, I think that ought to be the end of the demo. I mustn't be too ambitious at this stage. So thank you very much. It will now go around in a circle and it will show all, all of that uh, information again. Thank you.